One of the best things I find about traveling the world is meeting other inspiring travelers and hearing their stories. So today, I'm going to reflect on five amazing globe trotters I've met over the years, and we begin in Sri Lanka. They are the Goys. And we travel the world with a kid! Hi, my name is Polly. Matthew. Luca. Jessica. I randomly bumped into them today in Dambulla, Sri Lanka, and their story is so inspiring that I wanted to share it with the world. Firstly, they are one of the most diverse families I've ever met. Uh, I was born in France. My parents were born in Cambodia, and my grandparents from China. Jessica is Mexican, Mexican. and the kids are from Quebec, Canada. This lovely family is on an amazing trip to cover a quarter of the world. We're traveling 15 months and we're uh, visiting 50 countries. So we started in uh, Iceland, then we went to Europe, then to the Middle East, now in Asia. After Philippines, we're going to uh, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Vanuatu, then back to uh, Japan, and then back to Europe and North Africa, and then back to Canada. That's the plan. I have already booked all the tickets <laughs> and all the, all the hotels, so yeah, we know what, where we're going. <laughs> what inspired you to originally take this trip? Actually, there was a lot of things. The routine was uh, very bad and, uh, you know, we wanted to move around. We've had the project to travel around the world since a long time, but uh, we thought it was the right opportunity when uh, the winter was coming in Canada. <laughs> We all know that traveling is not free, and so the Goys have some tricks up their sleeve. Uh, we're traveling with our own money. We were saving a lot since uh, we started to work. So uh, we invested in uh, real estate, and uh, now we, we sold, sold everything. everything and we left. <laughs> sold everything? Yeah. And you said you use miles? I use miles, so it took six months to gather all the points. We have like a million points with uh, 16 credit cards. That's travel hacking. And then we have uh, like uh, three months worth of hotels. Yeah, so here is my spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. These are all the countries that I'm going to visit. You know, here is Sri Lanka. So we have hotels, restaurants, groceries, etc. Crazy, man. <laughs> I don't plan until the day before. <laughs> they are estimating the total cost of the trip to be less than $70,000. And that's for four people for 15 months. Next comes the question of schooling. How do they do it? How old are you? Nine. He? He's seven. He's shy, but he's seven. Third grade and second grade. Um, I'm doing homeschooling. Uh, we're just doing some math, some uh, French. We have scanned the, the books and we're doing it in a PDF. Each of them have a, has an iPad. And truth be told, traveling is one of the best ways to educate the youth. They've created incredible experiences all over the world. Yeah, we love the balloons as a family in Cappadocia. We flew them and the kids were so happy to be able to see 150 balloons all over. The amount of patience they have to travel with two kids is astonishing. I don't think many parents could mentally or physically do that, but for the Goys, it works perfectly. Traveling has taught us to be open, to be tolerant, and most of all, to appreciate life. Next, we're going to travel to the little country of Nauru to learn about a man who likes to venture off the beaten path. This is Red. And I'm the most untraditional tourist we've ever met. <laughs> nice, man! <laughs> so, that's all you travel with, man? Yep, everything. Just carry on. I never check in baggage. This man is obsessed with visiting the world's disputed territories. What does that mean? So, uh, a disputed country is, um, or territory is an entity that is not recognized or has uh, limited recognition by other UN states. So that's uh, Somaliland, the one that everyone knows, uh, Taiwan, Kosovo and um, in Palestine. Yeah. And then you have um, Nagano Karabakh, South Ossetia, Abkhazia, Transnistria, Western Sahara and Northern Cyprus. I've been to 9 of the 10 and I'm planning to go to South Ossetia later this year. Of all places, I met Red on a flight to Nauru, Nauru, the least visited country in the world. How did he start his obsession with these disputed territories? So, uh, my first one was Somaliland. So that's a peculiar one. Because you have to research quite a bit about um, the country, how to get in the visa and all. And then when I got in, I realized that, hey, this is um, really interesting. The people, they are very proud of their own country. And then um, they in a very unusual position, you see, because um, if they want to travel, they can't travel on, on their passports. Looking at this one country, I realized that, hey, um, I looked at the list, there's at least nine more. 
And yeah, from then on I just... What's interesting about Red is that he carries the number one passport in the world. Singaporeans can visit more countries visa-free than any other nationality. But Red is not your average traveler. I haven't been to the USA, I haven't been to Australia, I haven't been to New Zealand, <clears throat> I haven't been to Japan, I haven't been to uh, many of the countries in, in Europe actually. What draws him so close to these disputed territories? They are pretty interesting, so how they got to be. They are they're neither here nor there. They don't belong uh, as a sovereign state, but then um, they have their own culture, their own people, their own president, their own currency even. It's really interesting if you go there and then you see all these monuments or signs of patriotism, like, like, like the flags, for example. It's everywhere, so I, I find it really, really interesting to, to check this out. Now Red is on a mission to visit every country, which is currently at 80. I have been to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Uzbekistan, Eritrea. And you like North Korea? Yeah, North Korea is nice. Um, it, it's one of those countries where not so many people go to, but uh, truthfully, it's not that difficult to go there. Yeah. I do want to get to every country, but um, it's taking a bit longer because now I have a wife, I have two kids, um, one one-year-old and one two-year-old, so they are really young and in, in between looking after them, I, I travel here and there. Your wife must be really cool if she lets, tra if she lets you travel. Yes, exactly. Um, um, she loves to travel, uh, not to disputed countries, but yes, she loves to travel and um, I'm really thankful that she allows me to travel. So man, where are you heading next? Uh, next up, I'll be headed to Iraqi Kurdistan, but for now, I'll see you later. That is, if you can find him. Our next traveler comes from Iraqi Kurdistan and nothing can stop him from traveling to every country despite having the world's worst passport. This is Badr Khan. And I have been to 70 countries with the world's worst passport. His passport says Iraq, which only allows him to visit 30 countries without getting a visa. But amazingly, it hasn't stopped him much because he's already visited 70 countries. These are all the things I had from my travels. Name me like your top five favorites. Uh, it's so difficult because it's like you have nine children and you say, I like this uh, child more than the other one. I met Badr Khan through Instagram when he reached out to host me during my trip to Iraqi Kurdistan. What's up guys, I just arrived in... Kurdistan! <laughs> Over the last four days, he's taken me around from Erbil to Lalish to Acre to Rwandus to Ranya and to his hometown of Soleimania. What a personality this guy has. I'm sexy and I know what. Da -da 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 -da. Always full of jokes and laughter. I wanna look fancy. <laughs> Born in Baghdad, but raised in Iraqi Kurdistan, Badr Khan first got inspired to travel from his parents, who told him bedtime travel stories in 1991 when they had to flee to the mountains to escape civil war. His first trip abroad was to Turkey in 2007, and then he slowly got around, going to a few countries a year before a breakout in 2016. And I went to 26 countries during that year. As a pharmacist by day, he travels on every single holiday he can. Couch surfing, backpacking, meeting all kinds of people, and just enjoying life more than most people I've met. But I'm not sure if you realize how difficult it is for this man to travel. Getting visas for him are super tedious. If I want to visit Philippines, I have to go to Baghdad to apply and also do visa interview with the ambassador. And for example, if I would like to visit South Africa, I have to fly to Jordan and apply at their embassy there. Imagine. Badr Khan is aware that his beard comes off as intimidating, so he wants to make one thing clear. I'm a tourist, not a terrorist. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. In everything that he does, his main message is this. To shatter the stereotype about the Iraqi passport and to inspire people to travel and see the world. And his message is coming through because he gets recognized all over the streets of Kurdistan. People know him, people love him, and I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Our next adventure comes from Denmark and we luckily cross paths in Bangkok. We are both on pace to finish the countries around the same time, except I use airplanes and he doesn't. This is Thor. And I'm going to be the first person in history to reach every country in the world without flying. By car, bus, train, and container ship. Now it looks like I'll be completing in 2020. Have you ever, throughout this journey, thought about giving up? Yes. These days, I think about it every day. 
A native of Denmark, 40-year-old Thor started his project back in 2013 when he realized that this mission has never been done before. So he set off, traveling only by car, train, boat, bicycle, and foot crossing every single border by either land or sea, which is not as easy as it sounds. I've been on 17 container ships, 400 buses, I've been on 250 trains, I've been on top of a truck for two days, and I've even been on a high-performance yacht. Over the last five years and five months, Thor has visited 174 countries, which looks something like this. So I started in Denmark, crossed the border to Germany, I did 37 countries in Europe, then I went over the North Atlantic, made it to North America, through Central America, South America, up through the entire Caribbean, from Bahamas back to US, then over the Atlantic on a container ship, into Africa, Western Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Indian Ocean, back to Eastern Africa, Northern Africa, completed Africa after two years and three months. Then I came back, finished off Europe, then I went to the Middle East, visited every country in the Middle East, finished off with Israel within that portion, then I went to Caucasus, and I went to the stands, did all seven stands. Then eventually I came to India and made my way across Central Asia where we are now. You guys get that? <laughs> Thor and I have actually been friends online for years, but this is the first time we've met in real life. And from what he's been telling me, this project is more intense than I thought. My three cardinal rules within this project, which makes it almost impossible to complete, are that I cannot fly at any point within this project for any reason whatsoever. I need to spend more than 24 hours in each country, but on average I spend 11 days and I cannot go back home until I either quit this project or I finish by reaching the last country without flying. What you can see here in the background is Beirut. <laughs> Technically, I'm not here. Uh, I want to spend some time in Lebanon and not on board a ship. I'm on board a ship here. Uh, Okay, so what's been your budget? Like how much do you spend a day or per month? I'm traveling on a $20 per day budget. So that's a budget which covers four elements of the project. It would be transportation, accommodation, my meals and visas. You have a number of, of visas that are very hard to get, especially if you cannot go home. So I have to work out how to get them. The three hardest visas to get? Equatorial Guinea, KSA, Syria. As you might expect, Thor has plenty of gut-wrenching stories to share, mostly from the African continent. I was desperately trying to get back into Gabon, which is an African country in the Central African region. I had left my bag inside Gabon, I had a visa, I had all my paperwork, they weren't letting me back in for whatever reason. So I devised this crazy plan where I went uh, on an 800k detour with a taxi to the border with, with Congo, and I wanted to get through there and some bad stuff happened in the forest and eventually I got to the border and some bad stuff happened at the border. Uh, people were partying, this was around New Year's Eve. I was bushed, I had no energy left and I fell asleep and uh, got a good eight, nine hours of sleep and the next day they put me into a bush taxi which is like a Toyota Corolla with uh, eight or nine people inside and all the luggage and who knows how the brakes are. And we get going on this dirt road and uh, I see people falling asleep like this and eventually I see the uh, driver, he starts nodding slowly and eventually he's out and I'm the only one awake we're going some 70 80 kilometers per hour on a dirt road there's a cliff on one side and the car starts leaning or, or, or going to the side and I'm not thinking at all just pure reflex I reach out I was on the back seat reflex grab the steering wheel get us back up and he wakes up and he's angry with me for what I've done and he realizes what I've done and then he's not angry anymore he didn't fall asleep again and everyone's still asleep in the taxi so there nobody knew what happened no one knew what happened the most impressive thing to me about Thor's project is that he has never once given up despite all the near-death experiences insane bureaucracy visa denials extreme loneliness budget constraints and his beloved family and fiance back home <laughs> if there's a will there's a way and Thor isn't stopping until the finish line all right, Drew, it's good meeting you. So I'll see you when we finish this thing. Yeah, man, good luck. See you on the road. Yeah, you too, man. And finally, our last warrior comes from the country of Malaysia. And despite being born without legs, he was able to hike up to Mount Everest Base Camp. This is Adam. And I'm the first person to climb Everest Base Camp with only my hand. What was your biggest struggle crawling through Everest? Uh, the food. <laughs> uh, we can only survive on rara noodles and eggs. So you had no physical struggles? Your arms? Physical struggles, only the, the weather. Uh, because 
there it was so cold. It's a beautiful morning here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Adam's hometown. We met up for a morning hike this morning and I have never felt more inspired in my life than by this man. I was born premature uh, and at months old uh, I had a high fever and then along the ways at the end I had diagnosed with polio and since then my, my, my leg from wrist up to the bottom is paralyzed and I can only either crawl or you know pull myself on the floor. I cannot walk with my legs, I cannot run with my legs, I can only stand for a few seconds. There were some experts telling me that for me to walk using prosthetic leg, uh, I need to cut them off. But I said to them, no, I'm gonna keep it. His physical condition has never held him back from achieving his goals. A few years ago, he received a mass communication degree from the International Islamic University of Malaysia. But when he graduated, he wasn't sure what to do with his life until this one evening. I opened up my Facebook and I saw a lot of people posting up pictures of them climbing and having a selfie on the peak of hills, peak of mountains. And then at that moment, I feel like something is calling me. I want to join them, I want to go on a hiking trips and that when it starts. I like hiking because it gives me a way to push myself beyond the limit that I know. Adam's dream is that he can uplift the spirit of other disabled people to chase their dreams. Anything is possible if you set your mind to it. This guy is truly an inspiration to all of us to never give up. If it is possible, I, I want to keep hiking. I want to finish all uh, the seven summit, if it is possible. A lot of people do not make it to Everest Base Camp with two legs. Adam did it with zero. All right, Drew, catch you later. I got this mountain to climb. Good luck, bro. See you on Thank the other you. side. In all honesty, these are just five of thousands of inspiring travelers I've met on the road, and I love hearing their stories. As for now, I'm getting ready to kick off this 17 day road trip from Rome to Amsterdam with my sister. See you tomorrow from Rome. Woo <laughs>